that the gears are in place, uh, everything's been torqued down. I know there's some discussion out there about like what these should be torqued down to. I've been told uh, that the OEM is fine, which I think is 15 here and 19 there. I've been told that uh, that's not enough, it'll back out. So I, I put them both at 25 with some, some of this Loctite 272 stuff. Uh, I don't think it's going anywhere. And it's been sitting there for at least two or three days now. And it'll probably be a couple more days again before, uh, before I get everything back together and start it up. So really all that's left to do now down here is just put the clutch basket back in. Everything's been torqued down. Like I said, both 25. This has been put back in. The, um, the chain tensioner, 89 inch pounds. These have been torqued down. These are also 89 inch pounds. So now I just gotta do the clutch basket. Uh, when you put the clutch basket in, you'll if you look on the back, there's like two little holes, and then there's two little kind of nubs uh, on that piece that's behind it. I wish I knew what it was called, but basically you just gotta line up the hole and the little the little nubs, and then when you push it on, you'll know you'll know that it's it's in there the right way because as you can see, this the basket isn't wiggling. It's seated with the the gear right there so that's good once you get that on there the next piece is to replace the washer that goes on there and then you can put the hub on the hub slides in push it back as far as it'll go and then you've got this uh, this piece here this kind of toothed washer this is supposed to get replaced with the new one that goes on like so You'll notice that there's a small gap between the edge of the toothed washer and uh, the spline. I think that's supposed to be there. I was looking at this earlier and I don't remember how it was when I took it off. I'll probably just go back and look at the video, but I, uh, I'm, I'm fairly certain that's right, only because everything else in here is sitting exactly the way that it's supposed to be. And then according to the manual, uh, the last step is just to put on the nut. What the hell did I do with the nut? Oh, there it is. With the nut, I need a new one of these. I'm still waiting for it to show up, but once it does, put the nut on there. Use my handy nandy tool to hold the hub in place while I tighten this down. And then we'll go ahead and put the plates back on in the order that they came off. And really, that'll be it. So the next step is getting this nut back on. I won't lie, it's a fucking bitch. Even with one of these types of tools, it's still a pain in the balls. Okay, I'm back. I'm gonna apologize for this video being like super jumpy. Uh, I've been working on this bike in you know, 15, 20 minute sections. Right now I'm at a point where I've got the clutch back on. I can see here, here are the springs. I think I, I think I recorded putting the plates back in, I'm not sure. But if you're doing this yourself, hopefully you've watched the beginning of the video where I actually took the plates out. Please, you know, everybody's got their own way of doing it, but I totally recommend when you take this off, just fold them straight down so that way uh, when you put them back on you can fold them straight back in if your bike has these two little marks uh, I know that I didn't quite follow the exact uh, like I didn't put them back in the exact slot but we take this pressure plate off you'll notice that uh, every other spot is kind of like blocked so really you can only put the plates in one of those slots that'll slide all the way back because if you go to the one next to it, it's blocked halfway back. So uh, once you get all the plates in, uh, if you've got them in the right order, you'll come to the second to last plate. That one is going to be staggered from the others. And what I mean is, uh, originally when I took it out, and I'll, I'll post it, uh, I'll repost the old part of the video here, you'll see that all the plates, uh, the, the five or six that are going back are in one, but the last plate is in the slot next to it. Uh, make sure you pay close attention to that and uh, please do yourself a favor, whatever you need to do to make sure that you get them all in the right order because all of those uh, steel plates are not the same thickness. Uh, they all have their own purpose and I don't know exactly why they are the way they are. I just, I don't want to have to spend the time to figure out what thickness goes where. So just pay attention to what you're doing. Once you get that all back in, 
and you get this plate uh, pushed into place, you know, you'll notice that you know without the, the springs in place, you can press slightly and this pressure plate will go in and out. So you just squeeze all the, all the pressure out of it and then put these springs in and just go uh, finger tight uh, until, uh, obviously until you need a wrench and then keep going around. Uh, just like when you're taking them out, you want this to be you know, nice, straight and even so that it you know, applies even pressure. Really, for the most part, I think done. Uh, I'm gonna double check my work before I put the, the new gasket on and put the, the clutch cover back on. But it really, that this should be the last, the last step in this process before, before the clutch cover goes back on. Okay, so I've double checked and triple checked uh, to make sure that everything is torqued down and I didn't forget any parts. Um, this is definitely not a job where you have extra parts left over. Uh, but I'm I'm very confident that everything is secure and, and where it needs to be. So the last step in this process is just putting the clutch cover and the new gasket on. The shop manual says you should put a little bit of liquid gasket here in this area, and that makes sense just because that's where the the casing is split and it's held together by this bolt here. So a little bit in this area, and then a little bit above where this wire passes through, so like right here, and then a, a little bit below here. Again, that's where the the engine casing is, is split. So before you do that, make sure you clean up the surface. Uh, I recommend uh, using a wire brush. Some people like to use like razor blades. Yeah, it works. Um, but I've had experiences in the past where I've like nicked, you know, the, you know, nicked the casing of whatever it is I'm working on. And even though it's not a huge deal, I mean, it could cause, it could cause some leaks and you don't really want to do that. So a wire brush works really well. Just make sure you clean up all your shavings if you got any. Any, any of the debris that falls off, but otherwise, you know, just make sure it's nice and clean in there. You don't want anything, anything floating around inside your engine case. I'm certain this looks pretty good. I'm, I'm very happy with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some liquid gasket on those little areas and then slap on a new, uh, new gasket right here. Make sure you definitely re replace the gasket and we'll go from there. So the clutch cover's on. Make sure you just kind of do a test fit and, and make sure that the gasket is sitting exactly where it's supposed to be and hasn't folded in on itself. Uh, brackets are in place. This bolt right here is the one that's gotta get a little bit of the blue Loctite on it. So just put a little smidge on there before you stick it back in. I would just recommend just getting it all nice and even and then torquing it uh, in the bolt pattern uh, that the, the, the manual recommends. So this is what the lower air box looks like once it's in place, uh, you'll know you'll know when it's sitting uh, correctly. It, there's like this sweet spot and you'll know um, if it's not fitting because remember I talked about the fuel rail? Lowering it down gives you the, just that enough clearance to get it to sit the way it's supposed to. 